Good morning, Willard Wildcats. Happy Tuesday, September 15th. We have a birthday to celebrate. Happy birthday to Juliana B. We hope you have a wonderful birthday on this Tuesday. Today, I was thinking about the IB attitudes of being creative and being curious. So I picked a book that I think will spark your creativity and your curiosity. And I'm gonna read you a little bit about it before we begin. The other part of this book that I'm hoping inspires you, and some of you might be familiar with this book, is that of asking questions and being an inquirer. So I'm hoping today that you take those three IB attitudes and principle away with you. This is called The Mysteries of Harris Burdick by Chris Van Allsburg. So here's the introduction to this book. The author gives us a bit of background before we begin. I first saw the drawings in this book a year ago in the home of a man named Peter Wenders. Though Mr. Wenders is retired now, he once worked for a children's book publisher, choosing the stories and pictures that would be turned into books. 30 years ago, a man called at, called at Mr. Peter Wenders' office, introducing himself as Harris Burdick. Mr. Burdick explained that he had written 14 stories and had many, had drawn many pictures for each one. He brought with him just one drawing from each story to see if Wenders liked his work. Peter Wenders was fascinated by the drawings. He told Burdick he would like to read the stories that went with them as soon as possible. The artist agreed to bring the stories the next morning. He left the 14 drawings with Wenders but did not return the next day or the day after that. Harris Burdick was never heard from again. Over the years, Wenders tried to find out who Burdick was and what happened to him, but he discovered nothing. To this day, Harris Burdick remains a complete mystery. His disappearance is not, only, is not the only mysteries left behind. What were the stories that went with these drawings? There are some clues. Burdick had written a title and a caption for each picture, which we'll read today. When I told Peter Wenders how difficult it was to look at the pictures and their captions without imagining a story, he smiled and left the room. He returned with a dust-covered cardboard box. Inside, there were dozens of stories, all inspired by the Burdick drawings. They'd been written years ago by Wenders' children and their friends. I spent the rest of my visit reading these stories. They were remarkable, some bizarre, some funny, some downright scary. In the hope that other children will be inspired by them, the Burdick drawings are reproduced here for the first time. Chris Van Ellsberg, Providence, Rhode Island. Okay, here's your first one. Can you see the picture? So you see that picture? It says, Archie Smith, boy wonder, tiny voice asked, is he the one? So as you're being curious and creative, what story would you write around that? What does this make you think of? What questions do you have if you're being an inquirer? This one reads, under the rug, two weeks passed and it happened again. What's the rest of this story? What do you think's under the rug? So many questions. A strange day in July, he threw with all his might, but the third stone came skipping back. Doesn't this make you think? Missing in Venice, even with her mighty engines in reverse, the ocean liner was pulled further and further into the canal. What would the rest of the story be for that? What could be a newspaper event that happened? You could write all different types of things. Another place, another time. If there was an answer, he'd find it there. Uninvited guest, his heart was pounding. He was sure he had seen the doorknob turn. Who 
who do you think could live behind that little door? The harp. So it was true, he thought. It's really true. What do you think, what do you think might surround that picture? What kind of story? What genre, what type of story? Might it be a folk tale or a fairy tale? If it has magic in it, it might be a fairy tale, right? Mr. Linden's library. He had warned her about the book. Now it was too late. What do you think he had warned her about? What might happen next? What happened before? The seven chairs, the fifth one ended up in France. I hope I'm giving you lots of ideas to write about today. The third floor bedroom, it all began when someone left the window open. You know, you don't always have to write a story. Sometimes you could sketch it. So you could sketch out what happens before, after, next, then. You could kind of make up all of that in, through sketches. It doesn't always have to be in writing or typed or handwritten but sometimes it could be sketches to kind of get your ideas flowing. Just dessert, she lowered the knife and it grew even brighter. Captain Tor Tory, he swung his lantern three times and slowly the schooner appeared. Oscar and Alphonse, she knew it was time to send them back. The caterpillar softly wiggled in her hand, spelling out goodbye. The house on Maple Street, it was a perfect liftoff. Can you tell what might be happening there? What would cause a house to lift off? What does it remind you of? It kind of reminds me of Up. Do you know that movie? Where the house takes off and flies with all of the balloons? Well, Wildcats, I hope you enjoyed today's book. I hope it inspired some questions. I hope it inspired some ideas that you can use and take into your writings or your drawings today. And as always, it's wonderful to spend the morning with you. Remember, we are safe, respectful, and responsible. Have a wonderful day.